Hi, I'm Eloise. I am an author and a writer and a former corporate lawyer and I study law at Cambridge University. And today we're going to be talking about the LNAT and how you can do your best on this aptitude-based test. The LNAT is used across a range of universities which you should check out on the LNAT website specifically for the university that you're applying to. But mainly these are Cambridge, Oxford, the Russell Group, London University, so UCL, King's College and LSE, plus Bristol and Durham. In terms of the structure of the test, it is an online two-part test, section A and section B. Section A gives you 95 minutes for 42 questions, for which you receive a mark out of 42. And section B gives you 40 minutes to write an essay, where you have a choice of three questions. You are responsible for booking and organising your own LNAT. This will not normally happen through school and isn't normally organised directly through UCAS. This is something you book in addition to your UCAS process. The LNAT cycle runs from September to January of any given application season. And this test is separate from your UCAS application. So taking your LNAT doesn't necessarily submit any part of your UCAS application for you. These should be seen as two distinct processes. You can only sit the test once in each application cycle and your results are not carried over to a following year, so if you reapply the next year, you take the LNAT again. In terms of when to take the LNAT, it really depends on your own admissions deadline depending on which universities you're applying for. Cambridge and Oxford students tend to sit the LNAT in early October or late September, whereas students who are applying for the later admissions deadline have a little bit more time. But again, it is helpful to not leave it until the last minute so you don't get stressed, while also still making sure that you have enough time to prepare. In terms of your score, you will obviously have a mark out of 42 for your multiple choice component. You actually won't see that score for quite a long time, often not until February of the following year. But your universities will be able to see it and download it after a certain date and it will form a component of their decision about your application. In terms of scores, you may be surprised to hear that not many people get 100% on the LNAT. In fact, the UK average is thought to be around 21, 22 out of 42. Having said that, we recommend that you aim significantly higher for Oxford and Cambridge and for the more competitive Russell Group universities. So a score of 28 to 31 could put you in a really stable, secure position. In terms of how universities use this test, it really is up to the individual university and for collegiate universities for the individual college as well. It normally forms the component of your overall application package, so along with your personal statement or the equivalent, along with your references, your grades and everything else that forms part of the decision whether to offer you a place or to offer you an interview. In terms of preparation, the number one thing to do is look at the official LNAT resources. So the official LNAT website has everything that you need to prepare on it, although there are, of course, a lot of other resources available online. But just be really careful to only look at the official website for the official information and guidance. This is also the place where you book your test. The official guidance includes reading a lot. So one of the best things that you can do is get into a habit or a pattern of reading high quality news or opinion based sources every day if you can and really challenging yourself to think about some of the assumptions and arguments that are being offered in those news resources or opinion pieces. The reason this is so helpful for the LNAT is because it feeds into both part A and part B of the test. Part A for your comprehension skills, for the ability to understand an argument, for the ability to pick out counter arguments or assumptions or implications that are being made within the text, and for section B for the ability to formulate your own arguments and opinions. As you are working through your reading every day, challenge yourself with the following questions. What are the main issues at play in this text? What are the main arguments of the author? What are the counter arguments? Or if there aren't clear counter arguments, what counter arguments would you make? And are there any assumptions or implications in the passage? What is being relied on to draw those conclusions? The official LNAT website also includes a number of free practice tests that you can and should work through before your exam. Just make sure to space these out a little so that you don't run out of resources in the run up to your exam. There are also a number of online and book related resources that could help you prepare for your LNAT. So in terms of books, there are a lot of books offering multiple choice questions that you can get hold of and work through. Just be aware that when you're working with a book, this obviously doesn't reflect the screen-based test that you will have in the actual LNAT. In terms of on-screen resources, a platform called Arbitio is helpful for a lot of students, which offers a bank of multiple choice questions that you can work through as well as recent answers. For section A, some key pieces of technique for you. 
One is time management. And a lot of people lose marks on the LVAT purely because of poorly managed time. So for example, if you take a lot of time up top in the beginning of the test and then race through the end of the test, you're likely to drop marks potentially on questions that you could have found quite easy. So it's really important to pace yourself. Some students like to pace themselves by knowing when the halfway point will be of their test, of their section A, and holding themselves to that halfway point. So if you know when you start the exam, you can work out exactly when you should be halfway. On a more granular level, you could do that for quarters as well. So split the test into four, make sure you're progressing according to your timing. It is also important that you don't race through the test, on the other hand, because of the fear of running out of time, because the passages do require in-depth reading, which is why practice is so important to help you manage your time. In terms of the technique for section A, my absolute number one piece of advice is to use process of elimination to decide which answer you're going for out of the multiple choice questions. So the way you would do this is you read the passage, you read the question carefully, more than once potentially, and then go through the questions, the options that you have, deciding which ones aren't relevant. So you're going to try to eliminate all of the ones before picking your answer that you think is the right one. The reason this is so important on the LNAT in particular is because often you will be given two answers that are very similar or two answers that both appear right, but one might be slightly more accurate than the other one. And so it's really important to decide can you eliminate the ones that are wrong? And then can you end up with the maybe two that you're deciding between? And then can you make a really clear judgment based on the passage, based on your understanding of which one is the most correct answer? Remember though that there are no trick questions on the LNAT, so all of the answers that you need will be within the test and within your critical reasoning. In terms of section B, the best thing is to write a very clear, concise, um, well thought out, well reasoned and well argued essay. And again, this comes with practice. Perhaps you're already writing essays for other essay writing subjects, but it is really important to practice the LNAT technique specifically because it might be a little bit different to other subjects that you've already studied. There is no right or wrong way of doing your essay, but some key components that you will need to include for a really strong, well thought out essay include structure, so a really clear sense of structure, what you're arguing, how you're arguing it, the points that you're offering in favour of your argument. Secondly, an ability to observe or appreciate counter arguments. So can you acknowledge that there are a diversity of views on most topics of debate? Can you pick out some of those views, offer them up and then weigh them in relation to your own argument? or maybe prove how the counter argument isn't as strong or isn't as accurate as your main argument. And thirdly, can you write with fluency, clarity and precision? So these are kind of general language related skills. When it comes to taking the test itself, my best advice is to be there early, to trust in the preparation that you've done in the months previously. And remember that this test is ultimately testing the skills and the abilities that you've already been working on acquiring. The benefit from any more information, support, help or guidance in your journey towards the LNAT, please do check out the information on screen which will help you connect to an admissions test expert.